Greetings, Phantomaniacs! Welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel! <laughs> All right, uh, it is Monster Monday, it is also Mummy Monday, and Michelangelo Monday. What better way to kick off the spooky season than with the review of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universal Monsters mashup? So it's also mashup monday man what a what a wild convergence of m's in the world this is kicking off an entire month of spooky toy reviews here on the needless things youtube channel uh please do like subscribe and share and once i hit 1000 subscribers which should be very soon i will record a tour of my glow in the dark collection here in the phantom zone so uh, get those subs up. We're very, very close. All right, let's take a look at Michelangelo. We've got another gorgeous box. If you saw my reviews of uh, Leonardo and Raphael, you know that these are very like classy mashup figures with beautiful design. Uh, this box is wonderful. The the painting uh, painted style on the front looks really nice. Uh, it has a great matte finish, but with gloss on the lettering. Just a really classy presentation. Uh, you can find these all over Target. I've seen them in every Target I've gone to at this point. Uh, on the back of the box, one of my favorite uh, box backs of all time from NECA. They've really embraced this movie poster styling. It looks it's And it's all shots of the figure, but just done in these really dynamic, beautiful styles with all of the accessories and everything. Uh, the party dude is out of his tomb is my favorite. Uh, beware the curse of Cowabunga, you've been warned. Like these, the backs of these boxes have been so nice. I would love to have like 11 by 17 prints of all of these. But of course, we can just cut out the back of the box if you really want to hang on to them. But I'd like to have them without the tape marks and, and you know, retail damage and everything else. Uh, so beautiful box. And of course, on the, the side... We've got the cross cell with all of the different monsters. I'll say thus far, because we do know that Donatello, I believe, is the Invisible Man, is on the way as well. Uh, and then on the bottom of the box, the credits for everybody that works at NECA that brings these works of art to life. And then the little list of accessories there. Then we open up that front panel. And we've got the figure uh, and one more nice little shot of the figure coming down some steps designed by NECA's, uh, I guess, diorama people. So there you go. Beautiful presentation, uh, stands out in Target. And I, and I say that because it it just jumps off the shelf. I didn't, uh, my the closest Target to me, there are actually five Targets, believe it or not, in my routine, like over the course of a couple of weeks, there are five targets that I can choose to run in and out of uh, in, in my normal uh, work life activities. And uh, the one closest to me, though, is just a disaster right now. They're doing the remodel and it seems to be taking them a lot longer than the other ones. Uh, so seeing new product is actually a little tricky, but these guys jumped out at me. Uh, or this Michelangelo. Uh, so you can see again that nice background that's all model work with the stack of pizzas over here. This is great. I would I would have loved for at least one pizza box to come in here, but but still, that's neat. I like it. Uh, cool background. And then the figure itself. Here we go. It is time. Man, I love this big giant snake that comes with this guy. Uh, one of the things I love that NECA has been doing, uh, they are not putting tape directly on the accessories any longer. They now have these nice plastic trays. Now, of course, uh, you know, the elimination of plastic is something that I personally believe is an important thing to start doing. Uh, so I don't know how much longer NECA is going to keep using these extra plastic trays. You know, it's, it's kind of a shame because I, they've just found this really great solution, but now the, the market is kind of turning against uh, the unnecessary use of plastic, which it should. If we could find a nice plastic substitute, that would be great. I'd be very happy about that. Uh, but if we can reduce our usage of single-use plastics, I, I think that's a good thing. Uh, all right. Let's 
clip through. Speaking of single-use plastic uh, and, and what I just hate the most, these little plastic cords that everybody uses now to hold things in place. So much worse than twist ties. Now, obviously, they're cheaper because the old twist ties were a metal wire with a plastic coating on the outside, which had to be more expensive than just these little pieces of plastic trash. Uh, but man, I sure do hate these things. Man, this figure is beautiful. And just right now seeing, oh wow, he popped right out of there, uh, on the back of his shell, uh, look at those hieroglyphics. And I've got to adjust my camera just a little bit here. I'm getting a glare from my lights. Look at the hieroglyphics that are sculpted and have paint in them on his shell and look here on his belt as well which looks like it's hanging a little low right but it seems to be fixed in place right there and i'm not going to mess with it too much gosh the detail is just fantastic he's got a couple of bandages hanging down here uh his headband a little more worn looking than we usually see on the turtles it looks great and now on the front uh look at Look at that portrait. I mean, isn't that, it's it's the mummy, like it's Michelangelo, he's a Ninja Turtle, but the eye, all of the, the dried, wrinkled flesh, uh, this one eye turned up. I mean, look at that, that detailing, it is just 100% that Universal Monsters mummy. It's It's unbelievable. Uh, so all of the bandages you can see have this fantastic sculpted detail. Uh, they've got a wash on them to bring that sculpt out. Uh, Articulation-wise, these have been really nice so far. They've got kind of standard shoulders there. Uh, no bicep swivel, but I'm okay with that because, what you, yes, you could put it at a bandage, but it's still just going to break up the, the profile of the figure. Instead, what we've got is the swivel at the top of the double-jointed elbows. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, yeah, it's a double-jointed elbow, but that, that elbow pad's really kind of getting in the way of your your uh, posability. And, and, I mean, a little bit, yeah, but this is the mummy. This is not straight-up ninja Michelangelo. And actually, if you if you can see, as I move this around... Uh, that elbow pad does move, have a little bit of uh, give, a little bit of leeway as far as where you can position it. And you can get some deeper elbow bends out of the figure, out of the, using those double jointed elbows. Uh, and then the wrist, standard wrist joint. But if you'll notice, look at how the hand is positioned. It's kind of angled downward in that sort of mummy like, like droop position. I love that they sculpted that uh that shape into it that's really wonderful uh look at the uh on his belt here look at this medallion on the front more hieroglyphics just phenomenal detail on this guy really unbelievable uh yeah and it's funny because just looking at him a, a casual glance and he's honestly not as exciting as uh, Leo as the Hunchback and Raphael as Frankenstein. But once you get in closer, he's just chock full of exciting detail and, and really uh, another worthwhile entry, a worthwhile mashup uh, of these properties. Uh, same thing with this hand. It's got that kind of downward angle. Really nice. A and he's also skinny. So he has a Ninja Turtle physique, but he is also emaciated looking like the mummy is. And that's another thing where it seems like looking at Frankenstein and the Hunchback, they're both these huge, hulking, imposing figures. And then you look at, at Mikey as the mummy and you're like, oh, he's like, he's kind of smaller. He's not as imposing on the shelf, but that's by design. He is the mummy. Uh, gosh, I love these. The, the way that they've done everything on this is just brilliant. He's got some of the front shell uh, peeking out here, and it's all dried up. Everything about him looks, look, he's got more definition here 
where he just looks like he's dehydrated and, and all of this, uh, everything just looks dried up. Sorry, I'm, I'm knocking the figure into my camera. This is fantastic. Uh, double jointed knees uh, as well. Uh, pretty decent range there. Again, the knee pads, you know, they get in the way a little bit, but if you if you move them around, I think you can get more out of those joints. Uh, and again, rather than having the top of thigh swivel, they've got the top of knee swivel. Uh, and then the hip joint is kind of your standard neck of deal now. You can see it does have a top of thigh swivel, but that's mainly going to be, well, actually, that's got a pretty good range to it. So the, the that combined with the top of knee swivel, uh, and you've got some pretty good stuff going on there. Again, it's really the elbow pad uh, preventing, you know, the deep deeper poses more than anything. But again, this is this is the mummy. Uh, the ankle joint is is your standard modern ankle joint. Works really really well, and he doesn't have anything in the way preventing sort of that deeper or wider. Uh, bend there. And those bandages, everything is painted and sculpted, even under the feet. Uh, there, there's not an inch of this figure that was not thought about and considered by the artists. And I'm just going to give him a nice sort of hunched over pose there. Uh, he stands very, very easily. His feet are quite large, so he's got a really excellent base there. I don't expect this guy to fall over on the shelf or give you any problems in that way. Just fantastic. Another fantastic figure from a series that uh, I did not, you know, on an initial, initial glance, I was just like, I don't need this. I really just don't need this. I love Universal, Universal Monsters. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, but my gosh, how many lines can I collect? But then seeing them, and one, realizing that they are based off of the live action movie turtles, uh, the Jim Henson designs, uh, and also that they're just, they're, they're the finest gross out toys ever made in a way. Uh, because as, as we know, James Groman uh, had a hand in their design. If you are not familiar with that name, Google him now. He's a legend. Uh, so. There is Michelangelo the Mummy. Let's take a look at the accessories he came with. Uh, we first have uh, kind of the most striking thing in the box, this really long bendy cobra. Beautiful sculpt on this guy. Uh, he is all rubbery. Do, you know, because you can see he's got the bendy holes. Uh, the bending. We're going to see how well he works. You know, NECA has actually done uh, a decent amount of work in the realm of bendy toys because if you remember, they have done aliens uh, with Prometheus. They did the snake creatures. Um, they've done some bendy alien things, face huggers and whatnot. So this is not, you know, this is old news for NECA and they make a pretty good bendy item when you get down to it and you can see the wire, the wire goes from about here uh, all the way up to the base of the head. Uh, so everything that you would want to be articulated on this is articulated. Uh, so this will look great next to Michelangelo, or if you want to stick him with your GI Joe classified series, maybe you'd like to do that. Or with your, your smaller Joes, and this is some kind of giant mutant cobra uh, that Dr. Mindbender created. Who knows? But whatever the case, you get a great looking, very nicely painted cobra toy right here. Uh, you've got some extra bandages, very similar uh, to the mummy figure. Uh, these are not the same, uh, but very similar to the bandages that are on the uh, Boris Karloff mummy figure that came out and I'm going to look here and see if we get a indication as to where NECA believes these bandages should go. And it's, they're not even on the figure on the box. So it's up to you where you want to stick these. Uh, you could do one around the neck there if you wanted to, maybe I kind of like that. That's not bad. 
uh, and then one just sort of hanging off the arm, just a loose, creepy looking extra bandage situation going on. Uh, but they've got nice detail. They, I mean, they blend in perfectly, as you can see with the bandages that are on the figure. So very well done there. We have an alternate head that just looks strangely familiar to me. Hmm. Yes, that's right. This head is based on uh, that, that somewhat famous, at least to Ninja Turtle fans, image of the one of the 1990 turtle movie suits that's decomposed and kind of rotted they've actually used this as an alternate mummy head and as much as i want to use this one for that little piece of pop culture significance this one looks so good and is so right to me i think i'm gonna to have to stay with the default head but i'm thrilled that they included this one and i do love it uh all right got a bunch of alternate hands. You've got fists for punching. You've got C grips for gripping. And they all look great. And we're going to want to swap some of those out because we have also got some onk chucks. These really nice looking onks painted with actual metal chains, which is a huge deal. Uh, the Especially in a collector uh, item like this, you cannot, this could not be one solid piece of plastic, right? You gotta have chains on the nunchucks, the onk chucks. Uh, and you've got two of those and they're basically just identical, which is fine. I mean, that's, they should be, they should be. Uh, so let's do a little hand swap here because I do want to display him. Now I'm curious, let me get that bandage out of the way. I noticed these little shapes back here, and I'm wondering if that's possibly storage for these. If this, if uh, one, if the links here can be pressed onto those, it does not appear to be the case. Yeah, I don't see any way that that this attaches to anything. I guess those are just designs because nothing is going to plug into that but they just seem so intentional in where they are. Now, what you could do, possibly, no, there's just no storage for those. So he's either holding them or he's not. Uh, and my guy, I mean, he's, he's going to be holding them because those are great accessories. Uh, and I will say these hands switch out much more easily than a lot of NECA hands do. You know, sometimes NECA hands can be a little scary to try and swap out. But this guy... Nice, big, thick pegs on these. Sorry. So they're sturdy. I'm not worried about breaking them as I'm swapping the hands out. They just plug right in. Uh, the forearm and the hands are both relatively soft, pliable plastic. So everything just slots right in. He looks great. Now, I can't imagine this decrepit form swinging those things around with too much force or vigor. But there, I mean, that's he's Michelangelo, like it's a mummy Michelangelo, it's perfection. I love it. Uh, what a great way to have kicked off this month! Keep checking back in, uh, at the very least every Monday and Wednesday, but possibly more days throughout the week. I will have new spooky toy reviews all month long, uh, all the way through Halloween Day. So, like, subscribe, share, and like I said, once I hit a thousand. That glow-in-the-dark collection tour uh, will be recorded and posted. I expect that to happen this month, so we'll see. Thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share, and remember to avoid the curse of Kawabunga. Smash that like button if you like needless things.